A love I've never known I didn't even know his name What kind of love is this? What kind of man is this that died in agony? He who had done no wrong was crucified for me. What kind of man is this? By grace I have been saved It is the gift of God He destined me to be His child Such is His love No eye has ever seen no ear has ever heard Nor has the heart of man conceived What kind of love is this? Welcome everyone to this uh, Easter Sunday morning uh, service. We have a cross of flowers and in our Good Friday reflections we had lots of crosses and we asked lots of questions so here's another question for you. Why a cro cross of flowers? The grave was empty, for Jesus is alive, risen from the dead. He is a light that no one can extinguish. The flowers speak for of the new life that he brings. No one has seen God. But Jesus came to us and he was born and grew up and lived on the earth like all of us. And Jesus told us that God as his father and our father. In Jesus, God took on a body and a face, and those who saw him touched him and have told us about him. Happy Easter. We're going to sing number three, 309, See What a Morning, and sing in the faith 309.
Let's pray together. Once we lived in fear, afraid of falling, afraid of being no one, of not counting, afraid of having a life that was no more than a candle's flame, brief flicker, but not now. For in this, your time of trial, we suddenly know our life is worthwhile, that storm and change may wash against us, but firmly, eternally, unshakably, we are part of your kingdom, a kingdom that neither death nor the grave could destroy, a kingdom of life and joy where none are left out and none are forgotten and all are welcome to your great feast. We may hesitate to trust, slipping back into the doubt's slippery hands, but we still do not let us go. Over every obstacle, through every locked gate you come, so we may know that all our hopes and wishes are true, so let's remember all of this in the words that you have taught us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We're going to have a recap of uh, the Easter story. And this is something that Emma has shared on some of our groups and on Facebook pages and YouTube but I thought it was worth us sharing it today again. And it's the Easter story told in pictures and by some of the children. Jesus was riding on the donkey to Jerusalem. Jesus was mad because everyone wasn't praying. Mary put perfume on Jesus' toes because she loved him. The soldiers were looking for Jesus. Jesus broke the bread and he said it to his friends. Remember me. Jesus on the cross. Jesus died on us. Friday. Mary went to find Jesus, but Jesus wasn't there anymore. And he was alive. And we were all excited. This is just the beginning of the story. We're going to have our readings now. And um, the first reading is from Psalm 118, verses 1 and 2, and 14 to 24. Peter is going to read for us. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, His love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die, but live, 
and you'll proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvellous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this, this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Amen. And Barbara will read to us the story of the first Easter Sunday. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter, and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. She did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you were looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my father and to your father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Barbara. The cross that we have in front of us is empty. Jesus is not on the cross anymore. Remember that some people thought that they had to get rid of Jesus and so Jesus died on the cross. And people who loved Jesus gently put his body into a cave. But today we hear about the woman who went to the cave to get Jesus' body ready for burial. 
and they brought spices to prepare Jesus' body for burial. But we know what happened. When they got there, Jesus was not there. There was no body. The woman couldn't figure it out. And so standing by the cave was this messenger. And we usually call messengers angels. And they told the woman to look for Jesus where the people were. I think that's significant. Look for Jesus where the people are. So they raced back to tell the men what they'd seen and Peter came to check it out. Yep, the cave was empty. Jesus was alive. We have many crosses in our churches and maybe even in our homes and they remind us of Jesus is no longer on the cross. He's alive. Just as we see new signs of life around us today in our gardens and uh, with the birds singing and the sun shining through our windows, um, winter is over. The world has come to life again. Easter is not just a day. It's a season of many weeks. And we are Easter people and we live in an Easter world. The Easter news is spread to all who want to listen to it. And the disciples told people who in turn told people. And to this day, we still hear the message, a message of weeping and then of joy that comes with the morning like a new day. And we too, like the disciples, weep and then delight in the joy bursting forth from us. We too are called to bring this message, this message of new life and new beginnings and new possibilities um, to those who haven't heard it. I wonder if you can think about the first time that you actually believed that Jesus had come back from the dead, that Jesus was alive in your hearts, in your lives and in our world today. What helped you believe that? Was it the evidence for itself? Did, did you trust the person that was telling you this amazing bit of news? Was it easy? Was it difficult to accept that that was true, that actually Jesus loved us so much that he would do that for us? The Christian faith hinges on that belief that Jesus rose from the dead, that his death and his sacrifice only make sense if he conquers death from and is alive today. And how does his resurrection affect us and help us today? It's maybe a message which is more relevant this year than it ever has been. We are Easter people. We are living in this Easter world, not a good Friday world, it's an Easter world. And Easter isn't about Jesus, it is about us and our response to Jesus. Easter isn't about death, it's about life. And Easter is not about the past, it's about the future. We have to go on a journey. We've been on a journey of Lent, and, but we're still on a journey and we go from a journey from fear and doubt to wonder and then rejoicing that Jesus has done this amazing thing for us. He's changed life forever and we can rejoice as Easter people in that. But think about this. I was looking in the dictionary about the meaning of resuscitation and resuscitation means the resumption of physical existence. But resurrection means entry into a different kind of existence. So we are resurrection people. We have not been resuscitated. We have been resurrected. We are beings in process of a different kind of existence. And as we step into the new possibilities that, that post-COVID 
um, offers us, especially at this time, we, we need to know that we're not alone. We need to know that Jesus is with us in this process and that actually we, it is a journey. It's an Easter journey that we are going to be taking as we emerge from everything that has gone past in the last year. And when we're faced with difficult times, we have the knowledge that there is somebody there with us who knows how we feel, who knows how hard it is, and that being Easter people in a community who live with the knowledge that Jesus is free, Jesus enables us to live with the tensions and walks the tight ropes that life puts in front of us because he's gone before us, but he also walks with us, alongside us. We've been cleansed as Easter people and made white as snow because of what Jesus has done for us. But it's a continual process. And I wonder, as beings in process, what the possibilities are. Thank God for Easter and thank God for this Easter world. Amen. Let's share our prayers for others. Lord Jesus, here are your disciples, your wounded hands and feet in the world today are ours. At times we have been frightened ones, staying at a distance, worried about our safety or our reputations. But you come close to us, bringing peace and challenge and unlocking our potential and setting us free. At times we have been the doubting ones. When creeds conflict or certainty has evaded us, you have come close and allow us to speak our minds, accepting us and setting us free. At times we have been the confused ones, feeling far from you, with questions that don't have answers. And so in the morning of your resurrection, we listen for your voice. And so in this morning of resurrection, we pray for the people who are on our hearts. And so in this morning of resurrection, we give thanks for our communities of faith, the communities we live in, and the communities we serve. The risen Christ says to us, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Through fear, through our doubt, through our confusion. May we continue Jesus' work as we travel many roads, liberated and united by the one of the resurrected, the love of the resurrected one. Amen. We're going to finish our uh, service today by singing number 299. It's a song of Easter jubilation. It might be unfam unfamiliar to you, but I'm sure you'll grab hold of the tune quite quickly and um, sing along as you go. Jubilation fills the streets and towns Celebrations have begun Hear the music and the dancing now Join the laughter and the fun Oh, raise a joyful shout Clap your hands and dance 
unmute ourselves and um, share the grace together as Easter people in this Easter place. So may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Amen. Amen.